Well, welcome back, Austin fans. Another great episode of the Austin Rugby Podcast. We took a week off last week, and we hope that everybody is doing okay. Uh, we know all the issues that we had down here in Texas. Um, you know, there, there are some people who you know had flooding and pipes burst in their home, but you know we couldn't really sit down and record an episode of the podcast or get anybody on because, well, everybody's dealing with power issues and everything. So we welcome you back to this episode. This will be episode seven of our third season. So, Mr. Alex Reese over there. I'm oh. Dustin Zare. Um, man, Alex, how was your winter weather last week? Uh, <laughs> got, got kind of fortunate, I would say, because um, although my girlfriend and I's apartment uh, did get um, lost power, um, yeah. was able to go stay at my old place uh, because the new tenants haven't moved in yet. And oh, that's, um, that's kind of nice. The, the landlord, <laughs> yeah, the landlord, the guy who owns the house is is a fellow hun. And, uh, yeah, he said we could just, we could Hunt, camp there all week. So, <laughs> yep. Me and my girlfriend, uh, who's a Falc, we, uh, we just hung out there all week. So yeah. Oh, Austin rugby coming I know, in man. strong. There, there, there's, there's Austin rugby community tends to help each other out, whether you're a Hun, Black, Falc, or whatever, Gil Granny, whoever. Um, and, and that, on that note, we do have some exciting stuff that we are getting so close to being able to announce. Um, um, we're actually setting up uh, a fund uh, for Texans in general who have been affected by the winter weather. Uh, we're doing it a partnership with. Uh, course everybody at texas rugby monthly and the tru and we're really getting really excited so i can't make it official announcement yet but there's some exciting stuff that we're doing with that um and you know getting some good stuff for people and good funds and stuff for people who actually need it who are gravely affected by last week's weather um so this is pretty exciting and we've got some good partnerships probably coming up for that other good partnerships we have coming up is with the rugby shop we are close to being a very cool having a very cool thing on the rugby shop um we'll let you know as that happens too so lots of fun things from a supporter standpoint like i'm really excited for like we're all working towards you know better and better things as rugby you know continues to get closer and closer to kick off here in in austin for mlr um you know we can talk about all the the great stuff that's happened Mm -hmm. for stage the stages have changed in texas rugby so friendlies can happen yeah. now so that's exciting man lots to talk about um we won't get into all that now because we decided that we didn't want to give you guys a four-hour episode like we did the last time um <laughs> while we only had one interview alex and i talked for well we talked for a she talked a shit ton apparently <laughs> one hour and 40 minutes and if you guys lasted through that entire time we greatly appreciate you listen to the two of us rant about sponsorships we need, <laughs> someone, we, need, we need a third guy to keep us on the leash keep us on the leash I, we, we may have somebody we've had some people reach out recently about wanting to help out so we'll we'll keep that in mind strap, on, for- strap on the one of those little uh, muzzles yeah right oh, yeah. Yeah. automatic <laughs> mute button like hey you got the wrap it up yeah. box <laughs> yeah. so obviously you know the past couple of weeks alex and i have been going through each one of the different uh, positions talking about the great things that are happening we are going to round out the forward this week and we're getting close to covering the entire team and you know by that by season kickoff in three weeks uh we'll have covered everybody so uh we want to finish it off the forward packs this week by talking about really the the meat and potatoes if you will the 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 meat and potatoes of the forwards and that of course is our props and man do we've got a ton of them i mean i'm there's we always talk we've talked about it every every episode about having depth right like how much depth do we have now at every single position and and prop is no you know there's no slouch on that one like we've got top to bottom we've got some guys who who can pack down with with the best of them in mlr and so you know i don't know where you want to start alex uh we can start with younger guys we can start with older guys we can start with returning players we can start with guys coming back from season one <laughs> and so forth what, what? you got a, you got a preference on, on who you want to talk about maybe first we, maybe we start with uh with the new faces start with the new faces all right well so, so that's yeah. easy so you know first new face we got coming in is jake turnbull um Ooh. jake no you know 
he's he's not he's not somebody that people are gonna be go oh i've never heard of him he's been an mlr since season one he was with i mean you go all the way back to like pro rugby days he's he played with will mcgee at uh was a denver stampede and then obviously you know went on and and played with houston and last season he was with old glory and and just got back playing down in uh, australia at the, at the shoot shield but i think he's I mean, he's a solid player. Um, I think, and Alex, you could tell me if I'm wrong. I think he's got, uh, he's USA Eagle eligible, I believe. Yeah. Um, at least on residency, because he's been here since, what, 2014? So. I believe so. I was trying to look it up real quick. So. Yeah, I mean, he's he's 26. Like, I mean, he's, man, he, he's a beast. I think that, um, I, I remember watching him play, um, you know, I think last season we played Old Glory because he played against us down in San Antonio. Um, mm -hmm. if, I go, if I go back to stats, like he played like 80 minutes in each one of the matches. Like he averages 60 minutes a match for the five matches last season, which is pretty phenomenal for a prop. Like that's something that you don't hear about. Yeah. Like <laughs> to go the whole 90, or, well, 90 whole 80 minutes, every, you know, for almost every game. You know, I don't know. Like it's it it, it takes a lot out of you. Yeah, especially when, um, you know, A, the team was uh, four and one. And then, you know, B, maybe, maybe we never actually, uh, never, never got the real truth. But maybe he was the reason uh, the Beast wasn't playing. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the injury was just a front. He just couldn't, uh, he couldn't replace Jake Turnbull. <laughs> yeah, I, that's right. I mean, it, Beast, Beast goes down for one with a little knock and Jake was like, yeah, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna continue doing my thing. And uh, man, I was trying yeah. to think who else was on the other side of that, that, that old glory who played, man, I, now I can't remember who it is now. Um, I, I think that it, I think that Jake, I think he plays both tight. He can play both tight and loose head, but I think I was trying to look it up real quick and I can't again, terrible on me for not getting it right. I, I think that he just, he likes to play tight head more or no, excuse me, loose head more. Um, so that'll be, if, if that is true. And I, and I did read that, right. Um, I will, I'll say like he and Wapa, you know, having he and Wapa there on at the loose head side, like that's, that's a pretty solid, you know, one, two combination on the loose heads. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not even going <laughs> to, I'm not even going to begin to uh, I really know what I'm talking about with the, uh, the dark arts. Yeah. Front right. row. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's like, yeah, we're, I mean, we're he gets, learned about that. He gets around the park and he's physical. Um, and, and he's got the fitness, um, for it. And, you know, any, I feel like any, any prop that can cover, you know, both sides of the front row is, is valuable, especially, um, for sure. especially in major league rugby where guys are less specialized. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, when you have somebody that can cover both and I think like, you know, we talk about it, another guy on the team, I, I you know, Larome, I believe he can cover both as well. You know, I, I know certain guys have preferences, but I think kind of the going trend is like, if you are a front rower, you're almost expected like if, if you're a four if you're a prop you're almost expected to play both or at least you know uh i don't know how how lame was it in the uh in the world cup when the spring box you know they were smashing italy and then oh, they two italian no props got, two italian props got injured and they had two props remaining but they were both loose heads They're both loose neither heads one yeah. Neither one of them could play tight head, so it conveniently meant that it was uncontested scrums the rest of the game. It was yeah. like that's terrible. Just side <laughs> such a yeah, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where it's like, come on, guys, like just just don't like just just learn both and be, you'll be all right. So, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, so so Jake Turnbull, good signing. Really, you know, that's I, I think it's good cover. If if he plays if he plays loose more than he plays tight, or if he covers for both, like that's great. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm I'm actually thinking that I may be incorrect in that. I think he may play like because if 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 the beast was playing loose head, right? Because that's what his because the beast's mm -hmm. preference was loose head. Then Jake, if he was playing all eighty minutes, then he was probably playing tight head. So. I don't know. I'm just trying to do math in my head real quick and trying to do, use logic, which doesn't always help. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so obviously Jake Turnbull coming, you know, he's Australian born, but you know, he is uh, American by residency. Now he is eligible, um, which is really great to hear. So, you know, 
potential for USA Eagle to have more USA Eagles on the Gilgronies, which would be great. Um, other potential other USA Eagles who are on the team and actually coming back to the team is is the next guy on the list. Um, I, I guess you can call him a new guy, but he's actually a returning player. Um, coming back from season one, Eagle five yeah. fourteen. Patty Ryan, man. And this is the American oh, Patty yeah. Ryan, not the Australian Patty Ryan that played for San Diego that people always got confused like in the first two years. They're like, oh yeah, Patty Ryan. He plays a San Diego. Like, no, 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 different Patty Ryan. Like this is, is the American Patty Ryan. <laughs> or he's Irish, so he's really the uh, he's the Patty Patty Ryan. He's the he's the Patty Patty Ryan. <laughs> yeah. So I mean obviously uh, obviously he's he's a force, man. Like you know, him coming, yeah. him coming back to Austin from Rooney um, is a big pickup at t- at tight head because he is a tight. He prefers tight head on that one. He's a tight head prop. That's that's his what yeah. he's labeled as. He's a uh, he's an awesome re re addition to the team. Um, you know, I think like you you look across Major League Rugby and especially last season that I noticed like the power and the scrum. And having a good set piece was such a huge asset for a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I just think back to that game when we played Toronto and oh, we were just dominated made, made by that by that forward pack, and it was like we never even got a, an inch in that game. We never even got any kind of foothold into the game. So, um, you know, if you have a dominant forward pack or especially a dominant front row it just immediately makes life difficult for your opponent um i kind of liken it to having a great offensive line mm-hmm. um it's just like sets a good platform for your team um and we saw how much of an impact you know it, it made when jamie mcintosh came in yeah to kind of add some stability to the scrum so you're adding more almost, stability almost instantly yeah, instantly. So you're having more stability with Patty Ryan coming in, and that's a pretty ferocious front row um, combination there. Those two are on the pitch at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think Patty coming back is is really great. It, it, again, it adds the depth because you know it's a long season. Uh, you know, no no tight head prop, no loose head prop um, is going to be. Uh, yeah, they're not going to be playing 80 minutes every single game like you're just by the end of the season you're just going to get knocked down and worn out and yeah. like you, you can't do that so that's going to be um yeah i don't know that's this is my thought on the matter so uh but ha- having patty there i think is going to be great i think he you know if if you were to say you know right now you've got him at tight head and and while you know as, as just a clear tight head if you want to divide him up you have him and mason who we'll talk about in a minute here um mm-hmm. th- that's a pretty nice you know r- cover for both spots especially when you've got you know jake in there as well i really i was trying to click through real quick on on a separate screen <laughs> so i could yeah. like to see what jake played and man i feel bad that i can't actually figure out if he is a tight or loose head or if he played both i think he plays both i'm gonna go with that but anyway, so <laughs> we can keep going on. Um, so, I mean, Patty Ryan coming back is exciting. We've also got, you know, three others coming back right now, too. So we've got, you know, from you know, we'll, we'll go back with the person who's come back just from last season. And you were just talking about and that's WAPA. I mean, what what can be said about WAPA that are, that hasn't already been said? I mean, he's. Yeah, God. He, I mean, you, you talk about impact on a team, and you're right. I think, and it's not just like scrummaging impact, but it's leadership. And I think that that is you know, he's coming back in a player coach role, so that is also mm-hmm. something different too. Like it's not his normal, you know, not just going to play. Like he's he's going to he's going to coach. Which for his age, I think he's also at that age where he's ready to start coaching as well. Um, so that's that's great to see. What do you think is going to be important? You know, what do you think he brings to the table? You know, I mean, there's for, the pretty for forwards. There's the pretty like tangible benefits that meet the eye, which is that he's six foot five, almost three hundred, if not three hundred, and he's I mean, it's rock solid. He doesn't have an ounce of fat on him. Honestly, like he was one of the biggest dudes that I've oh, ever yeah. seen in person. He's a monster. Uh, yeah, he's so big and strong. Like just, just fit. Yeah, uh, and he's just you know another one of those earth movers that we talk about, and um, you know just phenomenal in the set piece. 
and you know he's just destructive in the open play and I mean like he's an all black he probably would have had he would have had tons of international caps if not for the fact that he was behind you know a couple of New Zealand's greatest props of all time with like Owen Franks and uh and and Joe Moody Joe Moody yeah uh, so I mean like he's the you don't earn an all even if it's just one all back cap that's it's yeah, still it's, a, it's still a cap it's still a cap for one of the best yeah. national teams. And, you know, yeah. Played, yeah, played for the Highlanders, played in France, and you know he's played at basically the the highest level in a lot of different countries. Um, which kind of brings me to the next point is like his professionalism and his leadership was such an enormous game changer for the team last oh, year. Yeah. Everybody that I think was a part of the team last year would would tell you the same thing that as soon as he got there it was a like a total shift of the attitude shifted of leadership just because he just commands that respect yeah because everyone likes him but he just like he's everybody's pal but man he does not take shit he didn't let he didn't even let you be he won't let guys be late for strapping 30 minutes before practice like you know he's, he's just Punctual. very prof- very yeah. punctual, very professional, and um, and it rubs off on the team. And yeah, his leadership is, is honestly, I think, his biggest asset at this stage of his career, despite the fact that he's still great on the field. Yeah, I, I definitely see that, and I definitely look forward to you know seeing what how how a full season of leadership and training and some off season yeah. training and stuff for them is going to be because he was you know again he went and played in in miter 10 as well you know in this this past season a little Just bit as well i mean yeah. so he's and still well. yeah right so it's it's awesome um you yeah. know we talk we talk about him you know we talk about and then we've got you know the the next to longest reigning player you know in the in in, in the props category and in, in Larome White as well coming back for uh-huh. his now third season so you've got Larome for his third season back w- with Austin who is loose head who prefers to play loose head <laughs> and so um so we've got you know Jamie and Larome at loose head and you've got you know Jake who man we'll figure it out and we'll put it in the in the text or something what Jake actually prefers to play but you've got Jake at least at tight head for sure and you've got Patty at tight head but Larome I mean I mean Larome's still young and he's solid and he's got a lot I mean got great potential like he had a rough mm-hmm. start to rough start to last year um but I think Larome you know the season before like he plays really well and I, I think he scrummages really well you know, he trained with the beast at his academy and so you know and the beast had high praise for him so i think that that's also really important to have somebody young to be able to step up into you know say because if wapa's not going to play all 80 minutes every match you need to have somebody who can come on and finish the game i think la- like i think last year um you know we Basically, until Wapa got there, I don't think that there was even – we didn't have a scrum coach. No, I um, think so. So I think that there was um, maybe like a lack of, of technical detail, I think, that um, was just missing for, for the young guys. And having Wapa come in offered a lot of – I think a lot of really good guidance and a lot of just detail around the, the scrummaging. And then now we throw in – Patty Ryan and Jake Turnbull as well, along with the WAPA. Um, I think that's a great environment for for Larome to really hone in his scrummaging skills because open play, yeah. he's uh, he's a very good tackler and he's very very good ball runner. Um, and I think you know he once he puts those two aspects of his game together, he's going to be very very dangerous. And I mean he's got a. a MLR championship under his belt. Yeah, I mean, he's, a, he's won player. for sure. Yeah. Well, he's, I mean, he's obviously been there um, and been extremely successful at this level. And I think that I, I expect him to to have a huge leap up this year. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that we would look at is age. Like, you know, you talked about, you know, Patty and Jake. Like, P- Jake's 26. Patty is, oh, I had it over here. Um, 29 so yeah so patty's got a little more experience uh and i think larome is oh man i my computer just froze on me so, <laughs> as i'm looking over here uh i, I forget how L- larome's young 
I think he's 25, maybe he's 25. around. The same yeah, exactly. So like Jake, Jake brings, you know, years of experience, you know, playing, you know, for Houston, for Old Glory, you know, and then, you know, you have little Rome who, again, I still think that he's going to, he's still kind of working and honing his skills. I don't think in the forwards, I don't think you really learn the dark arts until you're at least 29. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's got to be at least 29 before you become a really good scrummager. I think <laughs> that's, 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 that's what I'm going to go with at least. Um, well, then, I mean, shit, the, uh, the beast was just dominant in the world cup at 30, 34. Four? Yeah. 34. And this last one. Uh, right and and that's the, the, again I, I think it's just it, it's exciting to see that to know that like we're just building it from the years so, like we're mm-hmm. i think coach harris said that he wanted to build a texas sized scr- you know scrum forwards pack, yeah. like a, scr- a scrummaging forwards pack like he wants to build big beefy guys and we definitely definitely have that um which brings us to the last one and who somebody who's already joined us on the podcast this year and we're excited and he's, he's been around since the beginning since the i mean technically since the the huns elite day from the yeah. national championship and that's none other than our previous guest a couple weeks ago mr mason peterson peterson oh yeah <laughs> um so i mean come on i mean you you've known you've known mason for a while what what, what do you want to tell us about what tell everybody about mason that think, uh yeah. <laughs> that they don't know I already mean, <laughs> mason i think first off you know he was part of that huns national championship team so you know up the huns gotta love that um, shameless plug but, i mean mason came, mason came to austin to play for the huns when they did that quasi semi-professional thing when I think he was like 18, 18, 18 and then something like that. And then went into the Austin elite right after that at 19. And so he, he got, you know, he was introduced to professional major league rugby at really young. Yeah. And so I think he's only 23 right hurt. now. Yeah. He's people forget he's only 23 years old. And this last year, I think he tacked on like, 20 to 25 pounds yeah. um, of, of muscle and, and got really fit. And he was actually one of the guys that, um, that Austin Willis and I did a little, um, we did a little, you know, segment on breakout players of the year. And he was actually one of our 15 breakout players of MLR 2020. And I thought he just exploded onto the scene kind of oh. beginning with that hit with that hit Astero. Yeah. Yeah. The one that Dan Power says sent Bastro packing back to France. <laughs> yeah, it did. It, I mean, um, he's just awesome. He just yeah. phenomenal, phenomenal ball carrier, really good in the clean out and um and just a and the, I mean he's, he's a big not called, he's not called the hitman for no reason. Like, I know, he's, man. He's, I, I, he's going to be, I think a, a good full season with him is going to be good this year. I mean, you, so you you think about it, right? So you've got You've got Mason, who's kind of a breakout player, and you've got Patty Ryan at, at the tight at the tight heads, and you've got Larome, and you've got Wapa at, at loose heads, and you've got Jake, whatever side he plays on. <laughs> it's like we're, we'll get it. Sorry, Jake, if you're listening to this, man. We just I couldn't find which one, which position you prefer. We know you're a prop. We just don't know which side. <laughs> so, I mean, but but it, it it builds depth and it builds you know there's a, a quality level that's there that I think has been lack you know I say lacking, but it's been you know it hasn't been there. You know we had Juan Echeverria you know previously you know Uruguayan international. Uh, different style of play, but I think that I mean, the, the, there's beef in in the in that front row, um, which is which is really yeah. exciting. So I don't know. Um, it was cool. I, um, last year, I guess Will McGee had um, put together. I don't know if he did it himself or if he got. I think some company he you knows did it and put together like a, a big analytics sheet from the Houston game and Houston actually controlled and kind of dominated the stats on like every single category when we played them last. Yeah. Um, except the one area that we just dominated them was dominant tackles. Yeah. And it was like, it was like, I think it was like 15 dominant tackles for the AGs to four yeah. for Houston. It led, and, to, it led to turnovers. 
Yeah, and um, Wapa had, I think, six, and Mason had four. And then, you know, Potu had the others. But yeah. that's ten dominant tackles from like your, your prop, so, yeah. which is like, you know, they're more than just more than just uh, scrummagers and set-piece guys, which is, I think, super encouraging. I think that's just kind of fun rugby to, that we're going to get to, you know, witness this year, just seeing yeah. big – collisions and and a lot of uh, pressure coming starting with our biggest heaviest guys which is yep. which is encouraging all right r- r- real quick as we wrap up this segment so we can get on to talking to one of our new front other front rowers in the hooker spot uh who do, who do you got at tight head who do you got at loose head in the first game i'm going so here's what i'm thinking uh wapa has to start wapa's yeah, yeah. you know that, that's given both, both of us are taking wapa at at loose yeah, I mean, yeah he, <laughs> Our leaders, main leaders of the team. I go Wapa and Mason. Yeah. And then in the second half, that's when we can bring on um, Patty and Jake or Larome. Especially, I think, bringing on Patty because that second half, you just bring a guy in to just really lock down that set piece yeah. and maybe get, you know, might win a couple penalties in the scrum. Fresh, just dominant. Um, scrummager and and you know you have Mason go 50 minutes or so let him get around the park and uh, be his destructive self and then you know you, you bring in you bring yeah. in the, the recovery and uh, win some penalties take over control the game control the territory yeah I I, I think it's going to be it's going to be close who I, I mean Patty and Mason like I'm we'll see you after the preseason games I think I think I think we'll go with Mason we'll continue that good luck that we had from from the Houston match and from the last couple of matches they, they seem to work well in, in tandem so uh, yeah. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with uh, with Wapa and Mason as well so gotta see the hit man you know he's all right gotta, we gotta get him USA Eagle cap man like that's what we're that's what we're yeah. for so. um wait Dustin real quick we gotta do it every week quick Quick rapid fire Six Nations predictions. Uh, and <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll cover that right at, at, at the very end here. <laughs> so okay. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll come back after interviews and cover the, the Six Nations. So, um, coming up okay. next, our interview with Hugh Roach. Welcome back once again. Man. Last week, I had Bryce Campbell on, or I guess it was two weeks ago now, too, after all the stuff that's happened with, with the winter storm. So two weeks ago, we had Bryce Campbell on, and my microphone was terrible, and it was my computer audio. So I make sure that now we got it all locked and loaded, and, and we're good, because we got another really great guest on. I'm, I'm really excited when, when it was announced that he signed with us. Um, instantly, I knew who he was. Everybody was really excited to have him come on. He's got 50 caps in Super Rugby. He's he's won a Super Rugby championship with the Waratahs. Um, unfortunately, he didn't get to go play with London Irish in last this past season. Uh, we keep having this connection with London Irish, Bryce Campbell, Sebastian De Chavez. Is it, we're the feeder team for the, for the Irish now. It's like, or they're the feeder team for us. I think is what we should call it. But of course, we want to welcome onto the show Hugh Campbell or is it Hugh Campbell, Hugh Roach. Excuse me, Hugh. So that's about Bryce Campbell. Second, like Hugh Roach, man. What's going on, brother? <laughs> oh, mate. It's awesome to be here. Awesome to be in Texas, Austin. It's a wonderful time, wonderful time to be alive. And uh, I mean, it's been a bit crazy with the weather, but, um, you know, it's great to be here. I'm happy. L- L- listen, um, I-, I know that you probably had some pre preconceptions for what Texas weather was supposed to be. Hot, dry, you know, pretty terrible. Dry, yeah. uh, who would have ever thought that you get here? Well, you've been here, what, a little over a month now? Is that right? That's about a month, yeah, about, about a, month. a month. And within the first month, you get a five, you get one of the worst blizzards in history in the state of Texas. One of the blizzards, the worst winter storms in history in the state of Texas. So <laughs> it's a bit crazy, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not used to the snow back home in Sydney. Yeah, it doesn't really snow there. You have to. Uh, it doesn't snow here either. The snow, so uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, I mean, uh, the novelty wore off after a couple of days, and when it started, blizzard, uh, the blizzard came through. But it was pretty cool to see at the start. <laughs> yeah, and it's. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I. I grew up north of here in the states, but you know, I moved to Texas to get away from that stuff. So trust me, we don't, right, we, yeah. <laughs> we don't really want it here. So you know, obviously, <laughs> um, you, you, the pedigree that you have coming in to to the AGs is oh, man, you're 
your history and what you've done so far in your career is pretty phenomenal. What was the, I guess, what was the decision to come, come to Austin? Like how, for, you know, to say, Hey man, we're, you know, you're playing super rugby. You did play, you were on with the crusaders, uh, beginning of uh, 2020 before, I guess, before the pandemic hit, you played your 50th cap, you know, against the sun wolves. Yep. Um, that's right. Yeah. And, and then the world collapsed as I tell people, uh, <laughs> and stuff went yeah. crazy. Uh, man, what, who, how did the, uh, the draw come in to come down here and to Texas, or I guess come over here and up here to Texas to play some rugby? Yeah, I think, you know, Super Rugby's, um, it's, it, it was a great time in my life as well. And um, I mean, that sort of, it didn't really come to an end, but um, a, an opportunity came up over here in a really new, or, or a newish kind of uh, competition. And I, I see there's a, lot, there's a lot of growth in the competition that can get really big, I think. Um, you know, there's no pads, obviously, a bit of football. Um, there's stops <laughs> in play, but with uh, with rugby, there's, uh, when it's played well, it's um, it's quite a spectacle. So I think coming over here, a lot of the fans will get involved. Um, I think there's a lot of room for growth um, in the game over here. A lot of people um, will get will get hooked. I feel so. Um, I just felt like it was the right time to come over here and um, yeah. you know get a new new perspective on life, a bit more travel, and um, I love America, so um, it just felt right to come over here. That's awesome. So for, for those that do not know who you are, um, and do not know that you're back, give us a kind of a quick synopsis of, you know, your, your career through rugby. Obviously, you know, growing up in Australia, you're, you're, Sid, you're Sydney born and raised. Is that right? <laughs> yep, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So, I mean, obviously, so, you know, so rugby and footy has been, in, I mean, from day one, it's probably part of your life. You know, what has it been like uh, you know, working up through the, the grade school days all the way up into, you know, to now? Yeah, I guess, I guess it has been... Um... I guess I've been blessed with opportunities have just uh, just uh, uh, you know come up for me. Um, a lot of guys who have a lot of talent who maybe should be in the professional league, they just didn't get the opportunities. And I think as I as I was coming coming through the grades um, about twenty twenty one, those opportunities just opened up for me, and doors were opening up at the professional level. Um, so I think I was a little bit fortunate um, at the time, yep. but I mean at the same at the same time, I, I took that with uh, both hands and. Fortunately, stayed in the system there at the Waratahs for a fair few years and um, got a few caps under the belt um, and played a lot of a lot of rugby for my club, Eastwood. Um, back there, we won a few titles there, which was really cool to be a part of. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a bit of a roller coaster. I've been very lucky with injuries too, so um, I think the best the best ability is availability, and um, I've been available for a lot of years now. So um, you know. I, Touch wood, we don't come up with another. <laughs> I was getting, injury, get, but, getting ready to say uh, yeah. touch wood here, man. In, in America, touch, they call it knock yeah. on wood, but I know the touch wood. Touch, so knock whatever, wood, knock, yeah, yeah. touch whatever you want to do. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Um, so you know, I'm 20, uh, 28 now. So um, I mean, in the front row, 28 is pretty young. So you oh, know, yeah. hopefully, we can keep the dream, yeah, keep keep the dream alive for a fair few years. But um, <laughs> I think you know, I've just taken my opportunities as they've come, and um, this is an, obviously another great opportunity. And um, take this with both hands, and um, you know, keep building. Yeah, I, I don't. I think the the adage is like you don't learn all of the dark arts of the front row until you're at least thirty one, thirty two, right? Like you. <laughs> I agree. It's like hey, you, you, you got, I'm still learning. Yeah, yeah. You, you got guys like Wapo right over to to your left there. That'll uh, that'll show you a couple of things probably throughout the the rest of the year. I would assume. <laughs> uh, every now and then we get a training session. You know, Wapo will say a bit of gold, and I'll say, "Yep, I've just learned something new today." Oh, and uh, no, yeah, <laughs> it's been awesome. <laughs> That's good. Well, so you know, obviously, it's um, you know, it, it's a bit of a change. You know, you were, you know, you were with the Waratahs. You won, was it two thousand and what year was that? Oh, I just forgot the that year. Was 14, fourteen. Yeah. That's what it was. 14, what was yeah. it? I mean, so you were young in that. You know, that's you were probably. Yeah, that was you know seven years ago now. So you were you were twenty one when you came up and won a championship. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of feeling is that like to you know in Super Rugby to you know to win a Super Rugby championship? You know that team obviously people know a lot of names from that that championship team but what was it like to come up as a 21 year old and win a championship pretty early in you know in your career for that yeah i think i think again i was really fortunate with the timing there um that 2014 um so i think i'll, I'll probably count 2013 as maybe my rookie year but yeah. i think over in oz your rookie year counts when you start playing maybe two or three games that will count as your rookie <laughs> year so yeah so 2014 was actually my rookie year and um to be in the team, uh, a team like that was just phenomenal. Um, you know, we had great players across the board. Um, it was a team effort. It was a bloody hard year, though. Um, you know, from day one in the preseason, um, back then our preseason was about 12, week, uh, 12 weeks long. So 
it was a long grind there and um, a lot of contact there. Our, our uh, coach, Michael Checker, is a very full-on guy. Yeah. Um, and he, he, he got the best out of everyone. But, you know, it took a, it took a lot of motion um, to get through those training sessions, get through the year. But just to get to the finish line there and um, see the boys uh, raise the trophy at the end, you know, as a team, it, it was really special. And, um, you know, we got to go in the change room afterwards. I think we were in there for about four hours after the game, just <laughs> lapping it up. And, um, you know, we had a, a really special time in the change room afterwards. And, um, you know, that really got me hooked on on professional football. It's um, it's a really hard profession. It's uh, it's really hard on the body. Oh, yeah. It's, um, you know, getting uh, prepared and emotionally ready, uh, you know, for each week is really hard. But, you know, those those times like that, you know, it just keeps you going. So I was really fortunate to, to be a part of that team. And, um, you know, it's kept me going for a few years after. So, yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, even going back to, you know, different groups, like you talked about it from school age all the way up to, you know, uh, you know, to winning championships, like you, you've you been pretty successful through almost each one of those. I think uh, I read that you had actually uh, played under, was it played under Coach Harris uh, before? um and and went undefeated yeah, yep. in, that, in, a, in a season i don't remember where it was like <laughs> this is it, was, me. it was high school it was, it was my high year 12 year yeah it was my last year of uh would have been what my senior year in college yeah. oh not college sorry high school high school um and he was the uh well, one of the coaches yeah so he went through uh and yeah we towed everyone up beat everyone so that was a good year so um you know i already had that connection with sammy harris there so um it's actually really cool to to link up again with him yeah. i think he's a phenomenal phenomenal coach and um I mean, he's an even better bloke, so it makes it really easy to, to work for him. <laughs> he is. He's he's a good guy. We like we like talking to him. We look forward to chatting yeah. with him right before the season starts here in just a couple of weeks. I mean, so you know, coming to Austin, you know, the music capital of the world. There's like all kinds of exciting things happening. Like, what are some of the things that you are excited about outside of you know, once we get out of COVID and everything, <laughs> obviously. That's right. Yeah. But, but but outside of that, like, what are some exciting things that you you know? Cause that kind of drew you to Texas and drew you to Austin. Because, I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, obviously rugby and coming to play with, with Coach Harris again and, you know, what we're building yeah. here. But what else kind of drew you to to the city? Yeah, I will, I will actually just touch on that, COVID. I think the team in, in the MLR is doing a really good job at, um, oh, yeah. you know, trying to control that with our team. We um, we had some pretty strict protocols in our own team. I'm not sure about the other guy, uh, the other teams, but um, I think they've, they've handled, handled that pretty well. Um, but I think... You know, I, I love America. Um, I've only just been through Texas before. I've never spent uh, that much time in Texas, but the people are lovely. Um, you know, the, the the live music scene, the nightclubs, obviously, <laughs> the nightlife's pretty cool. Um, I've got a few friends that have been through um, been through Austin, been to Longhorn games, and they just say it's amazing. So, um, yes. you know, as soon as I sort of got the call, I was um, I was pretty keen from day one. Um, yeah, and just uh, I just I sort of I saw the roster building building over time, and um, you know that made the the decision a lot easier. Yeah. Um, with uh, Mark Gerard and Sam Harris there, the coaches, um, it just made the made the decision really easy. Yeah. Did Did they reach out to you uh, to come, or was it you know through? I, I know the, there's all kinds of different organizations and groups that you know as, as player managers and as you know. Uh, as sports agents, you know, that work in the business, but did, did Sam yeah. and Mark reach out to you personally and say, Hey, you know, we've got an opportunity over here. Or was it, did it come in a different way? Um, I think, yeah, that's sort of, that, that, that sort of world um, in professional is a funny one because, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, everyone's got representation and they did sort of do the talking, but, you know, behind the, behind the scenes, I was really quite excited to get over here and, um, you know, the representation does what they do, but, um, yeah, I, I, I just really wanted to get over here. And the first time I heard about it, I was, um, I was really keen. Um, I've wanted to come to the MLR actually for maybe two seasons, but the timing just wasn't right for them. And, um, for me now seeking new, uh, a new opportunity and, um, just with all the stuff that happened with getting released from London, it was just the right time. And I was really glad that the guys rang me up and, um, you know, we went throughout our, the process of getting over here and I'm really happy that I am. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's it's so interesting to see, like you, like you said, you wanted to come, you wanted to play in MLR. Do you feel, you know, kind of back in, you know, as, as we kind of look at it as Americans, we just now see MLR in, in its infancy, still pretty much in its infancy. Um, and we look to Super Rugby, we look to, you know, Premiership, we look to, you know, all the top 14, whatever you, whatever you want to look at, to you know, the guys that, oh man, we'd love to see our guys play over there. Do you see kind of this yeah. draw of some who play super rugby now going, man, we can go play another, you know, 
because you know, yeah. seasons aren't always the same. Like you, you play you yeah. know, Miter 10 as well, which we'll talk about in a second here. But, you know, do you see That's guys right. going, man, I'd love to go play MLR for a season and then come back and play Super Rugby or come back and you know, maybe hone my skills a little bit more for some of those younger guys who maybe aren't getting the time, you know, in, you know, on the pitch in Super Rugby right now? Yeah, I, I really do. And um, I've had a, maybe two or three people hit my inbox um, lately of, <laughs> You know, like not even joking, like people say, can you tell the coach that I'm keen to come over? And um, really? I think I think everyone, especially myself, that's that's how I found myself here. Um, everyone can see the growth potential in the in the competition. And um, I mean, people aren't slouches over here. I mean, at training, it's um, it's the same as Super Rugby. It's quick. The skills, the skill level is high and people are, um, you know, the contact is very high as well. So um, if there's any misconceptions about the... Uh, the talent pool or whatever it is, it might be over here. It's 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 completely wrong. It's um there's some really good players over here, and um yeah, I think I think everyone as as players at the moment they can see the growth potential in the MLR. So I think we'll be finding a lot of big names come over. I mean, there already is big names coming over, but. I think in the future we're going to start seeing even more. So it's um it's really exciting. That's awesome. I mean, we we want to see it. We want to see the continued growth of of MLR. We want to see the continued, you know, we want to see people more people out into the games and stuff. Obviously. Um, That's by the right, way, yeah. you, you you talked about Texas. When Texas football comes back, if you get a chance to go and sit in the stadium yeah. where there's a hundred and ten thousand people cheering, um, it, it's a it's a very interesting experience to watch. We, I'd love to see us. Yeah. I'd love to see a rugby match with 110,000 people in, in yeah, Austin. I'll be, I'll be, Can you imagine yeah, that? I've, yeah. <laughs> I've experienced. I've experienced an 80,000 for the uh, British Irish Lions game, but um, yeah. I mean, 110 is a little bit. That's a different world, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, Americans and their collegiate sports. Trust me, man. It's not. It's it's not just here in Texas. It's all over the country. <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Right. So let's. I mean, I'd love to tell you. We talked a minute a bit ago about you know you played Super Rugby and stuff. You also uh, had a great season in Miter Miter Ten. Like you. You seem to have this thing about undefeated seasons going on with teams you play yeah. on, right? Like, so you had your high school team. Uh, obviously, your Waratahs team didn't go undefeated that year. <laughs> that, that's I don't think yeah, it's yeah. ever happened to have a team go undefeated in in Super Rugby in the full in Super Rugby before. Or these it'd maybe, be very hard to do it's, that. It's yeah. pretty hard. Yeah, I don't know, it'd be hard. Yeah. Off the top of my head, I don't think like Crusaders came close two years ago, I think, but I think they lost like two games. So, uh, but yeah. yes, but then you know playing Miter Ten and. How would you compare, you know, with, with, with sorry, play my team with, with Tasman Mako, like you guys went undefeated um, in that season, but how do you compare, you know, people tend to compare like MLR and, and Miter 10 as kind of being on the same level. Um, do you see it as that, or do you see MLR kind of slightly above kind of the Miter 10, Miter 10 level? And it's kind of, it's early to tell right now, but as far as. I was as just going to say, it's, it, yeah, for, for me right now, it's quite early days. Yeah. Um, I've only had uh, a couple of sessions here in the MLR. Um, the Mitre 10 is, um, was a fantastic experience and I was really thankful to, to, to get over there and, and train with the guys. We had a really, uh, quite a stacked team. If, uh, if anyone does the research <laughs> on who was in that team, that was, um, they were pretty good. It was a really good team. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but it was cool because we had obviously had a lot of expectations for our season in that team. Um, and we sort of, you know, we, we worked really hard to, to make sure that we lived up to that expectation. And I think in the end we did. But um, it's it's quite early days to compare the two, and um, it probably wouldn't be right to compare the two at the moment. Um, yeah. But I think uh, what I can say about the MLR is that um, with our team, um, our uh, our skill level and our skill development is still. We have a growth mindset at our club, and it's uh, every day we're getting better and better, and um, it's been really good. Um, I won't say pleasantly surprised because I knew the roster, I knew the capabilities of the guys in the team, uh, but I will say I'm really pleased with how it's going. Yeah. So let's let's dive into it. Let's let's talk a little bit about about the team and what's going on. You are at probably the, the most well, one of the most hotly contested positions um, at hooker. You know, we, we talked about it a c- couple of weeks ago. Alex Reese and I did. Um, you know about who's going to start, who's going to play. You know, guys like there's four. You know, there's four of you right now at hooker. You have you and you have uh, Robbie and you have Rams and then you have uh, Mason. And obviously that it, it's it's a tough you know it's that it's tough fighting right there especially going to, up against Robbie as well um yeah. what what do you what draws you into saying like 
that level of competition and how it makes you feel as as a player you know to say like well, you're battling against again other super rugby players you know american guys yeah. guys straight out of college who you know have aspirations of you know taking that that starting two jersey yeah i mean uh, you, you never want to get complacent in sport in life i guess you never want you never want complacency you always want competition so i think the fact or i think the number two role in every team is uh developing and and um you know, it's a more more of a dynamic role, I think, and I think being a hooker in the MLR, we can get around and be very mobile. Um, and I think that would probably be one of my be one of my strengths, being um, a little bit mobile. But our competition at um, training so far has been great. You know, we push each other, um, and there's no animosity uh, between between the hookers. We all get along really well when we push each other um, for that greatness, because we know at the end of the day. Uh, it's a team effort to win this competition. It's not just one person. It's not about an individual. So um, for me, it's it's not a deterrent to come over here and, and think, oh, there's a few guys in my position. Um, if anything, it drives drives me personally to to be my best self and yeah. and um, keep myself accountable and keep other people accountable. Um, and if we're playing well or we're playing not, we can we can go to the drawing board and, and bounce ideas off each other and get better and. Um, at the end of the day, it's about winning, and it's a team sport. So we win as a team, and um, we win as a team. We drink as a team. So that's, uh, that's, that's how we think about it. <laughs> that, the old rugby adage, and, you know. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> that's fun. I like that. That's good. Um, <laughs> that, you know, it is. It's it's lots of good stuff. I think the the competition is going to be really great. You know, we talked about. You know, I, I think you and Robbie, um, we know how Rams plays from previ him playing with previous seasons. Uh, don't know too much about Mason. I haven't seen him play, um, but you know it'll be good to see in some of those preseason matches that you guys have coming up if if they get to be uh, you know streamed or something like that. But it, it's a it's a good comparison to see you and and Robbie go up. I see Robbie is kind of a you're both really hard hitting. You're both hard runners. Uh, I gave you the edge on agility side to side movement. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But, you know, how do you, you know, how do you see yourself as a player as, you know, in the hooker position? Because, you know, if you think about it, you go back, you know, five, 10 years, the hooker position is probably the most, it's probably the position that's changed the most over the past couple of years, as far as you know, before it was just a big guy or a little bowling ball, basically guy, you know, that you, you wrap around. Yeah. I think of like Kevin Milamo or something like that, who's just short yeah, yeah. stocky and just, you know, just could run the ball pretty well to now. I mean, the athleticism that a lot of hookers have, you know, like yourself, like watching highlights, you know, you're out in the wing, you're out, like <laughs> you're out on the sideline yeah, yeah. making big runs and stuff. You know, do you, how do you see the change in, in the hooker position over since you started playing early? Yeah, um, I think the um, the scrummaging rules have changed as well um, from when I started to now. Um, they obviously, I mean, they change almost every year now. So I think back back in the day when you wanted a really big hooker or you just wanted a big front row is because there was no, there was a massive gap and we just came in and engaged. Whereas now they took the gap away and now we're head on head. So you don't have to be as big. Yeah. Um, and now and now it's sort of developed even more where there's a, just a little bit of a gap. So if you are a little bit sh a little bit shorter or a little bit uh, smaller, but you have good speed on the engage in the scrum, you can actually beat people to that space. Mm. Um, but and also around the field, um, I think I mean, I can't really speak on anyone else, but the way that I model my game is like probably like a flanker, like a seven. Um, I feel like I'm quite mobile and good, uh, v quite good laterally and good ball skills. So. Um, I really try to showcase that when I play. Um, yeah, I just I, I don't like just running into bodies. I like finding space and using footwork and getting around and, um, you know, making big plays, you know, making big plays and scoring tries is always fun. And, <laughs> um, you know, you get in, <laughs> you, you score a try and uh, you act like you've been there before you do a little dance and it's good fun. So that's kind of the way I like to play. There you go. So pl playing like a seven, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to ask uh, a, a fellow uh, loose forward uh, who's going to be interviewed next on, on the podcast, how he feels about you maybe switching out to seven or six or something if you're not going to get that two jersey you could take it over from uh, akina or uh, or mo or dominic bailey <laughs> uh, yeah i played my uh, i played my rookie season as a seven so uh, oh, i'm quite so um i mean you got that utility and uh and I mean, if people go down, I can always fill that role. So, uh, there, there, you know, you I, I, I'll play anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fly half next after that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's good. Hey, um, obviously season's right around the corner. We're what? Almost three weeks away from opening or not three weeks away from the opening game at Coda. What, what's kind of exciting for you? What are you looking forward to about that? On, um, is it March 20th? Yeah. March 20th. Yeah, three weeks. 
Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm sort of one of those guys who just lives day by day and just gets the job done. I haven't really, I, have, I personally haven't looked that far ahead. I know we've got a lot of uh, great entertainment, actually, as a team. The management's put a lot of stuff uh, behind, a lot of work behind the scenes to, oh, yeah. to make sure our fans are taken care of and they're having a good time. And um, I think a little bit of a shift away from uh, your typical, you know, golf clapping rugby union to more of a party atmosphere and more of a family atmosphere. I think the uh, the management for us have done a lot of work behind the scenes to, to make sure everyone's having a good time. So oh, yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to see, uh, to see our fans out man. there. And, uh, I know, yeah. After the I mean, management. I was going to drop his name, but you drop his name. If no, you want, I'll, drop, but, um, I'll drop his name. I mean, he doesn't yeah. know me, but I'll, to, if, yeah. if he wants to, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, you've got to. He'll know you after this. Yeah. you got, you got a legendary <laughs> DJ who's got to you know, come on the on the stage after the match. So you talk yeah, about you right. know, having, so, yeah. having a beer afterwards. That'll be, that'll be a whole lot of fun. So Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, we've, we've done a lot of work to make sure our fans are taken care of. And we're, you know, we we love our fans and we we can't wait to see them at the first game it's going to be unreal yeah it sounds good we look we look forward to it any last things you'd like to you know say hey to anybody who may be watching or listening back in australia as we'll stream this around the world here in in a couple days (laughs) yeah awesome you're awesome um i mean i I, my family knows how i feel i'm talking to them every day but i actually want to just give a little yeah you know shout out to you know everyone that's listening to the podcast who follows the team who loves their rugby you know um, it's a great game we've got going on here. When it's played well, it's one of the best spectacles in the world. So um, we hope to see you guys out at at, uh, at the first game. Uh, we're gonna we're we're working really hard at training now, putting our heart and soul into it just to make sure we get those wins on the weekend for you. So can't wait to see you guys there. It's yep. gonna be awesome. We look forward to it. We look forward to seeing you out there and seeing who's gonna win that battle for that number two. We're, we're excited. It, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited to watch that. Hey, uh, Hugh, we appreciate you coming on, man. We look forward to hopefully catching up with you later in the season, touching base. You know, maybe we can uh, we can pull some of that that, that historical magic you've had with undefeated teams, and uh, you know, take yeah, that to bring, bring yeah, that hopefully. to MLR, right, man? <laughs> Can't wait to do it. Let's Ab- do it. Absolutely. He Roach, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one, brother. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good good chat with it, man. Fun. I look forward to it, man. That battle is going to be great. That two battle is going to be, like Alex and I talked about it, it's going to be one of the best battles maybe the next best battle or maybe maybe a fight for the best battle and those in the starting positions we talked about it on the last episode of the podcast gonna be loose forwards the athleticism that we have at our loose forwards is through the roof uh you've got mo you've got Domikina, you've got michael the wall you've got uh, mclean jones and you've got our next guest on the show of course, that's the only one and only the uh, the foreman, the man, <laughs> Dom Bailey. What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm, I'm good. So uh, the the foreman nickname that that came about. Do you want to tell people how that came about? Since uh, apparently all of Austin Gilgrony social media is now call, it calls you the foreman and everything. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> During, during my off season, I'm a general contractor. So, and then I've been doing a lot of work with the AGs around our facilities, building our gym, uh, renovating, you know, our kitchen space, coach's office, basically our whole facility. Um, so, basically, if you that, need any housework done after you know two, the the winter storms last week, uh, and if he's got some time, oh. Dom's going to be great for. <laughs> yeah, not really, but yeah. No. <laughs> Ah, no, you're good, man. It's fun. Um, so obviously, you know, you are your returning player. This is this will be technically season three with the team, right? Um, That's correct. It was unfortunate. You know, obviously, when you came in 2019, um, you made it made a huge impact. Like we talked about it in one of the first podcasts. Like um, I remember watching you play, going, "Oh man!" Like he's like that, that athleticism, quick, you know, quick to the ball, you know, good jackler of the ball. Like, but towards the end of the 2019 season um had a was it acl injury is that correct yeah, correct yeah. If I'm wrong. yeah so acl injury um and how, how did you tell me how you felt like when that se- when that season kind of ended for you obviously 2019 wasn't a great season for the team in general um but just just for you where were you where were you at kind of you know mentally with that and, and thinking about how do you get back to you know how do you get back to the team in 2020 
Uh, mentally, you know, it, it, it takes a, it was my second ACL. So ah, I, 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 <laughs> um, so I just had to stay focused, you know, with my rehab recovery, you know, greatly. I had some good guys behind me, helping me support <laughs> me through this whole process of it and getting me back on the field within six months. So, I mean, that was the biggest challenge right there. Yeah. Um, so it's just a long, long road to recovery with yeah. ACL. And then obviously, you know, you, you re-signed for 2020, you're, you're coming back, you know, obviously things changed to go gronies and all the other stuff that, that happened. And then, you know, COVID hit, now, you were slated to come back. What I think we canceled it week four and you were slated four or five, you were slated to come back like halfway through the season, I believe. Was that right? No, I was actually, I was about to come and play in the San Diego game. Oh uh, man. And then they canceled the whole season that, oh, that man. week. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that, that's. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't know. I thought it was a little bit later in the season to that. So, man, now no. you, you, so you were close. I mean, you were, you were ready to play. I, I was cleared all the way through when the season kicked off. Oh, okay. But I follow MLR protocols and whatnot, which is better in my behalf, you know, trying to protect the player. So yeah. I thought that was pretty smooth. So now you've had basically a year and a half, year and three quarters to get to – get get into certain shape get into gameplay shape for those that have followed you follow you on social media for those that you know have seen you on the field you, you put on some muscle man like come on like <laughs> geez louise like you're making us all look bad here like us older guys are... <laughs> uh, yeah, just, what's, just what's trying to train you know better yourself, so what, what's been your you know we, we see we see on social media that um mr rams uh continues to tag you and, and maybe call you out on some stuff uh you know we know we know rams is, a, is he doesn't work out too much in his life just every minute of the day i think uh <laughs> what's, what's been you kind of him <laughs> what, what's that that every minute of the day that's him i know man the dude is unrelenting it, energy it, it unrelenting watched. yep well, I'm competing. So. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I guess what was your what was your training regiment like? You know, for you know, in in the off season this past year, that to kind of change up and uh, I guess get to where you wanted to be as far as coming into the the 2021 season. Uh I mean, really, it was just sticking to the program. Um, luckily enough, we got a really good uh, SMC and. We you, you you can say it now, so he's it's it's, it's official. So, <laughs> yeah, all right, well, time Thomas, but uh, you know, luckily, you know, ST gave us a nice quality program. You know, following that to the T and the running, and just it's a lot of preparation and a lot of devotion that you got to put into it. You know, yeah. if you put that hard work in, it's going to show in later. So that's what I've been just trying to do, and you know, staying consistent with that. You know, that's what's basically going to get you prepared. That's awesome, and, and we you know. We love to know. We love knowing that Simon Thomas has actually been announced, and it's really exciting to have somebody of his quality and his caliber coming to the team. And man, that's just you know, with the Crusaders and the years that they've been dominating down there in in New Zealand. So it's kind of excited to you know have him come and be a part of this organization now. So that that is exciting. But we that's talked, big, talk, big talked about that earlier. So <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So I mean, obviously. You know your your pathway to rugby is you know a, as an American is is usually different from you know people like you who you know just before you you know we talked you know from from the day he was born he had a rugby ball in his hand it's not always the same the same thing for Americans right so growing up you were I, I'd assume you were a football player I assume I know you played a little high school rugby as well because you played yeah. with Larome White actually <laughs> so in high school uh, you know I played I wrestled. Uh, played rugby as well, and then try to do a little bit of other sports here and there, football, track, whatnot. You know, I was like being active. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I got Lerome into coming out and playing with the. Oh, you cut, cut out for a minute there. Sorry, Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> so you, you said you got Lerome to come out and play play rugby with you? Yeah. That's nice. So were you guys same grad same graduating class? Like you've yep. known each other for so how long have you known Lerome White? And let's go into that. 2009. 2009. So when you were kids, basically. <laughs> That's Rushing funny. Your so yeah, so you, you wrestled like so um and obviously fr from from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so from I had to point that out. So just we we were talking about that offline. So from from Kentucky, you you wrestled like how do you feel 
you know, I, I played with a lot of rugby guys um, who were also wrestlers and felt as though they were better tacklers and better defenders. How do you feel the the training and the grappling techniques of of wrestling translate to rugby? Uh, in a lot of ways, you know, mm-hmm. understanding how your body moves and mechanics. And so like with wrestling, you know, it's all about takedowns and, you know, getting your points, whatnot. But if you kind of study how your opponent is moving, it's the same just like rugby with somebody stepping or agility, whatnot. You see how their body position and you go for your shot. Yeah. Just like wrestling. So yeah. that crossed over for me pretty easily. So I feel that like that's pretty, yeah. yeah. I, I think, I, you know, so I know a lot, of people, a lot of people talk about like the crossover athlete, the football to rugby and, you know, the soccer to rugby. I have always said, and I will continue to say, I think the wrestling to rugby is actually probably the best crossover because again from the like you said you know where they're going to move you know how their feet are going to operate like you know how to make your takedowns so i think those wrestlers make the best defenders and can be turned into the best rugby players but that's just my opinion no, nothing against football players who want to cross over <laughs> you're sitting there going yeah you're right man yeah you you know exactly what i'm talking about so. it just depends on how you want to run your attack you know whatnot too as well but yeah i agree with you yeah, yeah. I mean, you're known for you know having uh, good speed, quickness, and offensive skills too. We go back to watching you know some of the the match against Nola in 2019, which I still think was I argue is one of the tries of that season, um, just in, in MLR because I think you broke away and broke off about six tackles and probably 50, maybe 60 meters in that try. <laughs> yeah. What, do, do you remember? Do you remember back to that try? I mean, I can't remember if that was oh, your yeah. first try in MLR or if it was your yep. second one. It was your first one. What a way yeah. to make an impact. <laughs> <laughs> make a statement about you know scoring MLR tries. <laughs> so you know. I just got to try to beat that one. So. What's that? <laughs> so the bar is pretty high. I just got to try to beat that one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a 70, 70 plus breakaway where, you know, a stiff arm, you know, getting somebody off of you and a spin move or something, that'll probably be th- this year in, in, in tow, right? <laughs> in the works right. there you go um so we we talked la- or two weeks ago you know alex and i we talked about you know the battle at, at the loose forward position that you guys have um obviously there's a ton of talent um just all around just athleticism um you know michael you know coming back off of injury uh, you know it'll be kind of interesting to see how he fits into the mold as well what has it been like you know, we talked with you know about it with hugh about what the battle's been like at at, at two what's the battle at, at six and seven looking for you guys right now are you still slotted into play you know at at six or seven and if you if you are which would you prefer or are you looking to move back to eight as well <laughs> no i'm actually uh i'm sliding in for six or seven um i prefer to play seven but I'm, it's kind of similar to the same position but uh the battle between the players uh it's great competition is unreal where each each one of us has something to bring to the table which is a little bit different and you know it pushes each other to become better so i mean every day is a competition honestly so that's something i look forward to <laughs> that's awesome and in that in that competition you know, what are some of the things that obviously you, you have people like McLean Jones, who's, who's been playing for a long time. What are you learning from other players and what are you teaching other players that are that's helping you grow together as, as a unit, would you say? <laughs> well, I know these uh, are, this is a tough one, huh? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a real tough one. Uh, it's, it's hard to answer, to be honest, but, you know, thing is is just being open-minded yeah because players have different experiences and sees different looks at different things so it's best to be kind of open-minded to understand what they're saying so therefore it's like okay i'll give it a shot if it works out for me it works out for me if it doesn't it doesn't but like i said we all have something to bring to the table together and we can all grow from each other yeah and yeah i think obviously growth growth happens and growth happens with teams a lot and and we've seen kind of a drastic growth, you know, in Austin from that 2019 team. I'm trying to think uh, on off the top of my head, you've got maybe six guys that are still around from that team. If, if that, you, if, if, if that, if that you, you, Mo, Mason, Zinni, and Lerome, Lerome. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Uh, yeah. And Rams. Yeah. Rams, Rams so. was there kind of part. Yeah. I guess he was part. 
came in halfway through the year at end of the year from 2019 close close to it but so yes yeah, so it's like six guys the the change in the we keep hearing about it the change in the back room is completely different the change in the attitude what's it been like to kind of sit down and, and talk with you know coach harris and, and coach gerard and you know the entire staff you know I mean, simon and stuff who's now part of the team as far as you know the the mentality and the what they're trying to promote as an organization now uh it's great what they're trying to do right now honestly i mean we're really trying to build a family you know coming together and really changing this awesome team yeah there's some big things in the works coming so i mean that's <laughs> oh, look, look, he's trying to th- try to throw teases out there like oh there's big things in the works coming but i can't tell you because i don't want to get in trouble <laughs> <laughs> no it's good That's- i mean for that one <laughs> let's see. Stay, stay tuned everybody <laughs> um no, no i mean i think it's good like obviously you've been working hard everybody's been working hard it, it's been a big change uh, do you feel as though there's something that the team still has to prove i mean it has to prove to come off of that that 2019 season and even you know the beginning of the last year obviously we won in the texas cup against houston and that was a good good thing to prove but do you think there's maybe like a chip on on the six of you on on your shoulders saying like, man, we still need to prove this and, and show people that, you know. 100%, 100% I agree with you on that one. Um, that 2019 season, that was a pretty, that was, was pretty hard. I don't, I don't really like talking about it, but. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> I thought to put that one behind me, but honestly, there is, there is a chip on the six of us, honestly. Uh, and even some of the newer players that's coming over, like, they see where the team was and they want to rebrand the image of from the Austin Herrig or Lee to the AG. So it's, we don't even discuss that. Yeah. We're branding a whole team. You know, that's what I'm saying. This, this year is just going to be incredible. What's in the works, honestly. Yeah. Interesting. That I mean, it's, we love hearing as fans because I think it's going to be great and it's good to hear that you guys are, are on that same track. As far as, you know, obviously we're, we're a couple of weeks into, into training, snow apocalypse happened here in texas as we talked about with heat like that was just in- insane so uh, i don't know why that even ha- just don't get me wrong like it's fine it's over but um still people are we're still talking about it what was training like for you guys what was the whole situation like you know you have like two weeks of trading and then you have that hit you know <laughs> what was it yeah. walk us I mean, walk us like, through what, what was going through player minds the last week <laughs> it's, it's just kind of crazy you know for me like i went to college up in michigan so you know. i was kind of i'm used i'm used to the snow and ice whatnot but being here in texas it's not prepared you know there's no salt on the road no uh, plows <laughs> so, practice there was no practice the whole the whole state shut down so yeah you know we just hopped on zoom calls you know i had little meetings with you know, each other, whatnot, and just try to gain as much information as we can. Yeah. And so before we can get back on the field, just hit the ground running. That's awesome. And so this week has been been full tilt, like yeah, everybody out at practice, all, all kinds of good things happening. Um, what's kind of the mentality right now is we're, you know, as I said, we're about three weeks away from uh, from the season opener against, against Utah. Uh, the mentality right now, everybody's hungry. You know, for me, at least for me, I, I can speak on my behalf, but I, I'm, I'm super hungry. You know, it's been a while since I played rugby, so I'm looking forward to get back on the pitch. That's yeah. the biggest thing. That's awesome. It, you know, looking, looking at where you're at in your career and, and, and like you said, you're looking to get back on the pitch, you know, as, as we're fans of the game and you, you, you kind of grown up, did, did you have any, you know, people that you looked up to? You know, as you were going through, you know, youth rugby and into into MLR rugby now. Be honest with you, I did not. <laughs> that's that's fine. Like, that, and I think that's it's a unique situation, right? With with Americans who don't have access to those types of you know games to watch all the time. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, in in Kentucky, you know, who would have said we had access to any sort of sky sports or you know <laughs> or super rugby you know you, you, you're younger than i am so it's actually out more but even growing up like i remember you had to stay up to like three o'clock in the morning and find like a, a pirated channel or something that was you know through a satellite dish to watch a little bit of rugby but <laughs> that's good um yeah i mean you're, you're you're sporting some ag gear uh any of that 
going to be for sale for us to buy, like that hat right there. I'm 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 digging. You're that. gonna have to take our, our store out, but <laughs> I don't know what is gonna be put on that store. There's some things out there on now, um, yeah. which actually be pretty, pretty good to be honest with you. Yeah. There's some hoodies there that I actually want to order myself. Um, but there yeah. you go. Wait, you, you order yourself. You're gonna you can get free stuff from them too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You'll be all right. Um, I gotta. I gotta I got to support the league as well. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, what, what are you looking forward to to this season? You know, as we as we you know get ready to wrap things up here, what are some of the things that you're that you're really looking forward to to drive home for you know for 2021? You know, just maybe from a personal standpoint, you know, obviously team standpoint, everybody wants to lift the shield, which we all want. Uh, but what 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 are your, what's some personal goals that you've got for this year? Uh, personal goals is really just being my best self and trying to be there for the team as a team player. And then a biggest mark is just hopefully us as a team, you know, we can make that, that big statement, you know, who the AGs really are and what we stand for and, you know, and changing our reputation around. That's the big thing to me. That's nice. That's good to hear. So, you know, r real quick question um, of your roommates, which one of them is the worst cook? Worst cook. <laughs> Are, are they sitting over there? Yeah. They're, they're sitting over there listening to you right now, aren't they? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I've, I've never, we, we don't really cook for each other. You know, I mean, I do a lot. Of, I love cooking. Okay. So, so, so would you, would you say you're the best cook in the house? I would say I'm definitely the best cook in the house. <laughs> well, well, Hands down. We'll have, to, we'll have to talk with the other roommates here and see, you know, in the future and see if they agree with you on that one. <laughs> That's good. Um, you know, uh, Dom, any, any last, uh, you know, that's, shout outs or anything you want to say to everybody who's listening as we kind of wrap things up here and we look forward to that opening match on the 20th hey uh stay tuned and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in the stands you know it's going to be a great year so hold on for the big ride yeah we, we look forward to it you know obviously there's going to be that battle at that six seven spot you know you i, th I think you and you and mo and dom you know the two doms i like that I, it'd be fun to see both dom and dom on the field at the same time you know running through people domination. running around people what's it the domination oh gives me an idea for doing more artwork and stuff since you and dom are yeah. two you, it's, it seems like the artwork i did was both was all our loose forwards and zinni <laughs> and, and i did larome too so we'll have to do another one where, where we add more guys to it so <laughs> domination yeah. that's okay is that something that's going on like uh, is that a is that a going trend in in the uh <laughs> in the team right now or did you just make that up <laughs> me and him we joke around with oh, okay yeah. <laughs> okay well <laughs> maybe we'll have to get that going well we'll start start that that hashtag on social media we'll get that domination going on there so <laughs> hey man we greatly appreciate you coming on sitting sitting down for a little bit and chatting with us uh we look forward to seeing you finally get a chance to get back on the field uh again yeah it's been a long time but you know we're, we're weeks you know three weeks away of watching domination happen uh but hopefully getting you out there and you know again showing us what you can do on the field 100%. Thank you, man. Thanks awesome, for having man. me. Dominic Bailey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, guys. All right, Dustin. Finally, we can get to it. <laughs> uh, it was awesome. awesome to hear from uh, from Dom and uh, and Hugh there. Both, both really exciting players. Um, but now, for the, uh, for the meat and potatoes... <laughs> All the marbles. Extra rapid fire this week, uh, given the news that um, Scotland and the COVID afflicted French team, players, eleven players on France's team have COVID right now. Yeah, will will not be playing this weekend. So uh, we've got England traveling to play Wales, and we've got Ireland taking on lowly Italy. Dustin, oh, poor Italy, England, I Wales. I, I did. I want to point out that in the last one, I did call that Italy would score. Well, I forget how many points they scored, but I called it right on how many points they would score. But it, I thought it'd be closer than that. So I was also right on how many Scotland would score. Uh, I was just wrong on how many Wales would score. <laughs> uh, yep. So, and again, didn't play the red card into advantage. Uh, so if England gets a red card, uh, Wales wins. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> actually, I, I think either way, Wales is going to come out on top. So d definitely I, I, Ireland, Ireland over Italy. Uh, I don't even know what the score of that game is going to be. Um, we'll, we'll see. It was nice to see a, a different Ireland team play. Um, you know, see some different faces on the on the pitch. But uh, we'll see. I'm not too 
not too worried. I, probably, I don't know how much of that game I'll actually watch, but uh, England and Wales, man, that game is going to be. England's just been. I think they've been pretty poor. They, just as I do too. They didn't been poor. Uh, I think Wales is going to pull it off though. Uh, we'll we'll go twenty. We'll go twenty four eighteen. I think that's a good one. Twenty four eighteen. Yeah, we'll go that. 24-18 Wales. I, I am also going to stick with uh, with the Welsh boys. I think they're putting out a really good lineup. I'm going to go – I feel like they're starting to find their group. I'm going to go 17-16 Wales. Oh, man. Oh, going to be a close one. And I think Ireland – I think Ireland finally ends this losing streak. And I think that they are going to pummel Italy – Merciless. And I'm gonna go, yeah. I'm, gonna go, <laughs> I'm not even picking a score. 50, I'm gonna 50. go fifty. Yeah. I'm gonna go fifty to uh fifteen. Oh, okay. Um, forty-five eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. There. So there you go. Hey, everybody. Uh, we really appreciate you joining the uh, Austin Rugby Podcast again this week. Thanks for being with us, being Baron with us last week during our time of crisis. Uh, if you keep up to date, there's some fun stuff that we're putting out there on the social media channels in the next couple of days. So so keep keep an eye out for that. Uh, for more information, um, follow Austin Rugby supporters. Um, we're looking forward to it. In the next coming weeks, we're getting so close to kickoff of MLR 2021. Get excited. Bold Stadium. All kinds of fun things going on. Uh, stay tuned, man. Follow us on all your channels. If you want to watch the, if you're listening to us now and you want to watch us, go to our YouTube channel. If you're watching us and just want to listen to us and don't want to see our faces, we understand that too. <laughs> Spotify, all the other, all the other podcast channels. There's a million and a half of them. For Alex Reese, I'm Dustin Zare saying thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the pitch.